work here, so I, uh, I work here in this office and I have engineers here working with me on uh, some of the topics related to connected car, uh, telematics, user interaction, so I have lots of things actually that I can talk about. But I choose today one topic, uh, since you are here in Silicon Valley, and if you're living here in Silicon Valley actually like I do, uh, you will feel that there are lots of talks around us about artificial intelligence. And I wanted to tell you and share with you a little bit what we are doing with artificial intelligence. Um, but please feel free to ask me about other things too if you would be interested. So intelligence in automotive, um, the topic of course of intelligence and artificial intelligence is talked about uh, a lot in the news. Uh, there are movies about it here and um, Ex Machina and others, there are tons and tons of movies about artificial intelligence coming and coming still, still in the future will come more. Um, and I wanted just to be maybe a little bit more concrete about what we're doing. So I will tell you what we're thinking about. There is something that um, the system in the car can interact with users. So we call this contextual user experience. Um, there are um, other cases when the system in the car actually interacts with the environment. And we, we, we call this autonomous driving or, or automated driving. And then uh, when the system and the car interact with business around us, like the sales and finance and other things like that, then this is the big data topic. So these are the areas that we're focusing on. These are the areas where we use machine learning um, in the car. So what I wanted to focus on today is the contextual user experience. That's what I want to share with you a little bit. Um, so what is contextual user experience? So maybe we can define it first. So the idea there is that you can use some of the artificial intelligence technologies like machine learning, for example, to kind of um, understand what the user is doing and try to simplify the actions uh, for the user. And then after some time you build the trust between the machine and the user. The machine in this case will be the car. And then try to, from that point forward, to become more of a companion to the user. So um, this is what we're doing. This is not science fiction, right? This is what we are actually doing today. So let's talk a little bit about what machine learning means, just um, a definition of machine learning. In the old days, what we do is computer programming. What I studied at college is that, yes, you have some input, you have some, um, some data that you want to put in there, you create the computer, you sit down, write the code, and that computer program will give you some output. And that is, that is the traditional programming. You write code to get input and give you output. Machine learning is a little bit different. You watch certain phenomena. You have some input data. You watch the output. Um, and then from there, you get the computer to find the pattern, to find the program, to create for you the intelligence. You don't create it yourself. You make the computer create that. So that's the machine learning. Um, and that is much more suitable for things that are happening in the natural world, because it's very hard to find a concrete relationship between things. Then you can just let the computer do that for you and create the patterns. So why is that popular? Why we're hearing about artificial intelligence and machine learning every day in the news? Um, because we have lots of data, like the E-class that you have had actually has hundreds of sensors today. All of this data is available for you, and all of this data just in one car is available for you, and multiple cars available. Um, and with this huge amount of data, you can actually start understanding the patterns. Um, computer speed, power, uh, processing power. Uh, if you look at the car today, there are lots of processing units in the car. There is, of course, the head unit in front of you. There is one other unit that handles the driver assistance system. There is other units that handles all the sensors. There are lots and lots of processing power and computer power in the car. And, and just in the car, you can actually crunch all of these data and provide some patterns. So the computer is getting much, much faster and much, much more powerful that will enable us to actually create these patterns. And of course, the machine learning and artificial intelligence is not a new topic. It's been around for probably like 50 years now. Um, but within these 50 years, so many smart people actually came up with algorithms and ways to create this artificial intelligence um, that made it actually possible for everyone who's work in this field to, to actually tackle some problems in the real world. So now let's talk about what we actually do then in automotive. So how do we use this in automotive? So one of the things that we looked at um, is the number of features and, pattern, and, and patterns and, and, and how, how 
we are under continuous, um, um, let's say, um, um, we would like to add more features because customers want more features. Um, if you go to one of the maybe classic car shows and see how the head unit, what we call head unit or radio, looks like on those cars in the old good, good old days maybe, um, you had maybe AM, FM, four buttons to select channels or stations, and that's pretty much what you had. So you actually had only eight choices. You sit in the car and you want to listen to music, you had eight choices. Eight exact choices for how you can get your music in the car. Um, if you look at it today, uh, in the E-Class, you have AM, you have FM, you have HD radio, you have satellite radio, and uh, you have maybe, you have iHeart radio, uh, you have, have actually internet radio, you have, I would say, thousands and thousands of choices just to listen to music, just for this function. So how do we actually offer a user interface uh, for customers that will make it easy to find what you want among those hundreds and hundreds of choices? Um, so this is one of the things that we're actually focusing on very heavily, is that we know that there will be more features required, but actually we would like the user interface to be simpler. So that's how we use machine learning. We use machine learning to really, really, really understand the patterns really understand what the user um, is, going, is doing in the car, is going to be doing in the car, and from there simplify the user interaction for that user. So one concrete example I can give you is that imagine that uh, every morning you wake up at, let's say, 6 or 7, and you get in the car at 7.30, um, you turn on the ignition, you adjust your heating because maybe you need, you need a little bit cooler in the morning, um, you turn on the radio uh, because you want to listen to the news, a certain news station, and then you check the traffic and you drive to work, and then you make a couple of phone calls on your way to work. If you're doing this every Monday, like that's your pattern every Monday, then after a few Mondays, the car should know that. The car actually can understand that, should know that. The next time you get in the car, the car is for you, ready, with the right temperature, um, the right station that you, would, that you always listen to, um, the exact um, traffic for your, your exact route that you're taking every day, uh, so all of the things that you have to do every day, after some time the car will learn that, will create the pattern, will understand this. Now if it is not Monday, if it is Sunday, then you probably have a different pattern and the car can understand that too. So a car is smart enough to understand all of these different variations. Now if your kid comes in the car or if your wife comes in the car or your husband comes in the car, then it's a different pattern, it's a different profile. And that's how it is. So the car is actually start to become very, very much personalized to your liking and your needs. And you always have the option to choose something else. You always have the option to turn this feature off. But if you like it, that's how it is. Um, so that is one huge area we're actually looking at, is that how do we simplify the user experience and make it a little bit more intelligent and a little bit more delightful for the user by having a lot of machine learning in the background. The second thing is that imagine that you have that already and you have the car that really understands you 100%. You have your profile and this, the car knows everything about you and understands what you like and what you don't like. Um, how do you like your temperature in the morning, the, the real, uh, well, the actual, um, maybe news station that you listen to, um, the traffic, the actual route that you take every day. And then you go and take another car. Um, you probably upgrade from the C class to the S class. Or, uh, or maybe you just go to another, car, another place, another state, and you rent another car. Or you share a car with somebody else. Wouldn't it be nice if that profile that was created for you, your personal profile can follow you from one car to the other. So that's another area we're looking at. Because we look at people actually don't use just one car today. They use multiple cars in different scenarios. But one thing that they always do is that your habits will not change. So how we, how we can make it easier for you to take that, that profile with you from one car to the other and the experience can actually follow you. Uh, that is all done, of course, with your permission as a user. So as a user, you have control of over, all, all over this one and you can decide to take that with you or not. So uh, maybe I'll give you some one, one example that's public today um, that already we already released, uh, uh, already released in the market, which is uh, what we call companion app. So companion app, um, some of you might have heard about it, but the idea of navigation, we just took one use case about navigation. Um, all of you, after, after you said that you finished the session here, probably know exactly where you're going. 
Uh, but in reality, what happens is that you wait until you get in the car and you start fumbling with the buttons to input the destination in the car. And uh, the, we thought about the, the navigation experience as something actually you can do without sitting in the car. You can do before you even you get in the car. If you know where you're going, why can't you just tell your watch or phone, I want to go there? So if you're going to Hyatt Hotel after this one, you can just tell it, take me to Hyatt Hotel. And then the watch itself will give you walking direction. We did it with the Apple Watch, showing project with Apple, so we did this with Apple Watch's product. It's actually available in the market today. You can get that one. Um, so it gives you walking direction to your car, so that's the first step. Um, so you interacted once with the watch, but then you walk, you give you walking direction to your car, you get in your car, and then, and then after that you don't do anything in the car. The destination that you choose is already on your navigation system in the car. The car gives you driving direction after that, using the big screen, the navigation system that's embedded in the car. Um, then you park somewhere uh, in the near Hyatt Hotel, and then you get out of the car, and then the walking direction to the entrance of that hotel actually comes again on the watch. Um, so this is, we call it the door-to-door -door experience, the overall experience of navigation. Um, so we did this with the Apple Watch, and we're working to cover other wearables too, um, but the idea is that for one simple use case, we wanted to provide this kind of convenience, um, that you don't sit in the car and start think, thinking about how you end with the destination of the car. Um, one thing that's important for us in this whole thing is that you just interact once. You don't have to put multiple, the destination multiple times, and then the system will just understand what you want to do. In the first leg, the, you, what you want to do is actually to find your car, and then after that you want to find the parking lot, and then after that you want to find the final door to your final destination. And the system will have to understand all of that without you telling the system that. So this is an app, you download it today, it's an app available on uh, iTunes, uh, it's called MBO Companion App, and it, it works uh, with the C class and, and the S class. Uh, but what we decided is, after some time of using this, um, why can't the system actually know where you're going without you telling it? Um, well, many of you or some of you might actually have that Hyatt Hotel uh, plan in your calendar, for example. Um, or maybe if in the normal days, you every Sunday you're going and playing golf, for example, that's your habit every, every Sunday. Uh, maybe um, every day at 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. you go and pick up the kids from school. Maybe that's your habit and the system can do that. So after, the, after you use the system for some time, actually we decided to enable and turn on the machine learning in the system. Um, to decide what you, well, or tell you actually and predict for you what are you going to do next. So the way we did that is we observe uh, what you're doing, we train the system, the machine learning algorithms in the, in, the, in the system, and then we predict for you what you're going to do. So um, you drive to a certain destination, we look at all the contextual information associated with that, where did you start, what time of the day, was it with which day of the week, what was the temperature, for example, what is the location, where did you go to, all of this information we collect. Um, then we train the system saying, okay, if it is Monday, 8.30, that's where usually that person goes to. Um, if it is raining, that's where he will instead go to, and so on. So we create that kind of training for the system to understand, to, to, for the system to actually create the patterns. And then from there, we start predicting. So every time you look at the watch, or you look at the phone, or you look at the head unit in the car, it will tell you, I think you're going this way. I think you are actually going to that destination. And then you can say yes or no. You can say, yeah, you click it and it goes. Or you can, no, no, I'm going somewhere else today because today is special, I have something else. So try to make the whole experience much easier. So part of it is machine learning. Part of it is actually, this is how it looks, for example, on the watch. Part of it is machine learning. It's, it's the algorithms that run there and, and actually collect all the contextual information to create the pattern. And part of it is much simpler, actually. Part of it is just looking at your calendar that you have already on your phone or your watch or your system, whatever you're using. And, um, and between these two, we can cover most of the cases, uh, most of the destinations you will be going to. Because most likely you either have a pattern or you have something in your calendar and then that's where you're going to go next. So that's just an example of what we did. Um, but um, as you would expect, we're working on all of these ideas for our next generation vehicles too. Um, so 
how it will go in the future, I will leave you with, with some words from our chairman, Dr. Zetcher. And that's how, how he set the vision for us. The car will actually become a digital companion. It will understand more and more about you, and it will not wait for you to interact with it. It will interact with you. So this is where we're going with this. And this is how intelligence actually will end up in our cars, and you will be able to use it in the future. So <laughs>